So the adrenal gland is an important gland. It sits right on top of the kidney. So there's a picture of the kidney and the adrenal gland lies right on top of it. It's a uh, little pyramid shaped organ. Maybe about that large. It sits on top of the kidney. Adrenal just means on top of the kidney, adrenal gland. The adrenal gland has two different parts. He's got a cortex and a medulla. Who's on the outside? Cortex or medulla? Cortex. Cortex, that's right. It's like, it's like all the cortices of the body. So we'll draw two different parts. I'll shade in the medulla, which is on the inside and dark. And the cortex will just um, it's quite in color. So the cortex has a completely different role than the medulla does. We'll talk about the adrenal uh, medulla first because we actually have already talked about him. The, the adrenal medulla, he releases um, a bunch of norepinephrine and epinephrine into the blood. And we've talked about when this happens. What nervous system is this associated with? Sympathetic. So what we'll have is we'll have one of our sympathetic pathways. It sends um, an active potential in a preganglionic neuron that, dry, that goes out to the adrenal medulla. That triggers that adrenal medulla to release norepinephrine and epinephrine into the bloodstream. Okay, so now this, and again, norepinephrine and epinephrine is just a synonym for adrenaline. So when you think of adrenaline, you're really talking about norepinephrine and um, epinephrine, that gets released into the blood. What effect does that have on the body? It ramps up, it amplifies all the effects of that sympathetic nervous system, okay? Like how, well, and, and it's responsible, I think we had mentioned this, it's responsible for like 60% of the sympathetic activity in your body at one given time. So like 40%, give or take, is associated with those very specific nervous pathways, like you know, this neuron leaves the lateral horn of the spinal cord, goes out in the sympathetic trunk, it might go directly to the heart. That's going to tell heartbeat to increase, but heartbeat's also going to increase because the heart binds on it to adrenaline, right? So this is just going to ramp up sympathetic activity, and so the adrenal cortex releases two main hormones. And in those two guys are cortisol and aldosterone. Talk, we'll start with aldosterone, okay? Aldosterone is all about blood pressure. Um, let's say blood pressure in the body is too low. So BP is low, blood pressure is too low. This is gonna be detected in a couple of different places. Like remember how glossopharyngeal nerve that actually monitors blood pressure, you know, through the carotid sinuses, in addition the vagus nerve does too. Well, another place where this is monitored is in the kidneys. These little tubes in the kidneys, which we'll talk about, they monitor blood pressure. And when blood pressure is too low, they sense that. And when the kidneys sense that low blood pressure, they're gonna release a hormone called renin. So, I mean, taking in mind that, you know, I simplified them, some things here. Just because the kidneys released renin, that means the kidneys detected that blood pressure and they released the hormone. Yeah, it kind of goes without saying it, but just keep going to that. Renin is a hormone. It gets released into the blood. Renin. It circulates all around the body. He binds onto the adrenal cortex, right? So when the adrenal cortex binds onto renin, the adrenal cortex is going to release another hormone called aldosterone. Aldosterone does two major things, okay? Aldosterone tells the kidneys to reabsorb sodium from the urine, and it tells the kidneys to secrete potassium. So those are the two major functions of aldosterone. It tells the kidneys to reabsorb sodium and to release potassium. Sodium, so they keep sodium in the body, they reabsorb it from the, the urine, and then the kidneys release potassium. Now, 
The most important thing about this guy in this situation is the sodium. So I'm gonna circle that in pink. Sodium's half the table salt, right? Sodium fluoride's table salt. So think of sodium as salt. If, what do we know about water and salt? Water follows salt. It's actually really hard for the body to move water around actively. You know, you need a pump for that, you know? But a trick is if we want water to go in a certain place or in a certain direction, we can move salt and we know that water will follow that salt. So a good way to move water is to move salt around and just have the water follow it. So in this case, the kidneys reabsorb water. What do you think, I mean, excuse me, they reabsorb salt. That's the answer. What do you think water's gonna do? Get reabsorbed too, or stay in the, in the urine? Get, get, get reabsorbed too, right? So the water follows salt. So if water gets reabsorbed, what's gonna happen? The blood volume. In, increase. Up, more water, more blood volume. If blood volume goes up, what happens to blood pressure? It goes up as well. I think we had talked about this. Think about your cardiovascular system is this big system of balloons, right, that hold fluid. If you cram more fluid into a balloon, pressure goes up, right? You just cram more fluid, pressure goes up. So if blood volume goes up, you're cramming more blood into those tubes, blood pressure is gonna go up. And we fixed our problem. Okay, that's how, that's how that works. Another time in which uh, aldosterone release is, re is um, released from the, the cortex is when potassium is too high. This is like the easiest little situation ever. Potassium is too high, the adrenal cortex can measure this. When potassium is high, aldosterone is released. What does that do to potassium? Kidneys release potassium. We're perfect. So, oh yeah, potassium is high. Aldosterone release. Problem fixed. It re it releases it. it just like release, just gets rid of it, right? It just it just releases it into the urine. Normal amounts of stress, you know, just normal amounts of stress that you might experience really doesn't affect the release of ACTH from the anterior pituitary. Remember ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone? So in your normal daily life, you might experience some stress here, stress there, you can get this normal release of ACTH. But if you go through a period of, of, of chronic stress, so a stressful situation for a couple of days or weeks, that's gonna disturb that normal cycle and release of ACTH. And that's gonna cause the anterior pituitary to release more, significantly more ACTH than normal. So if we have chronic stress, chronic stress is gonna increase the release of ACTH, but it's gotta be chronic, like long-term stress. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, right, is gonna stimulate the release of more aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. This is a pretty simple. We can just take this, draw an arrow right there. What's going to be the ultimate effect of that? What's at the very bottom? Raise your blood pressure. That's why. That's one reason in which chronic stress leads to hypertension. Yeah, you know, you've heard about that. Like stressful job, blood pressure's up. That's because you're experiencing stress for a long amount of time that increases the amount of ACTH being released from the anterior pituitary, and that's gonna increase aldosterone secretion over a long amount of time, blood pressure goes up chronically, okay? The reason the body does that is the body thinks, well, like, well, obviously you're experiencing a lot of stress, we need to prepare you for exercise, like, indefinitely, right? Because elevated blood pressure is gonna help you deliver blood to the tissues, it's gonna help you um, perform athletically. And so the body's like, well, you're, you know, need this all the time, so. That's, that'll be perfect. Downside of that is we'll learn the cardiovascular system is like chronic high blood pressure, puts a lot of stress on your arteries, causes them to be not as elastic, and makes your heart work harder for a longer period of time than it needs to. Last thing that I want to talk about for aldosterone 
happens when blood pressure is too high or higher than what your body thinks it should be. When blood pressure is too high, <laughs> the heart actually releases a hormone called ANP. Like, don't even worry about what it stands for. Just remember ANP. It stands for like anti diuretic peptide. Like, it's just ANP, right? ANP inhibits the release of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. What's that going to do to blood pressure? Lower it. Less aldosterone. We know aldosterone raises blood pressure, so this is going to lower blood pressure. And that's aldosterone. All right. Cortisol is a funny thing. So cortisol is a hormone that's released by the adrenal cortex that in our normal life, like our normal just daily life, cortisol is being released in a very specific cycle. It peaks in the morning, right? We wake up, and it typically is at a very low level, right? We go to bed, okay? So we have this normal cycle of cortisol. Cortisol, as we'll learn, you know, here in a second, it's got some important functions, like it'll, um, it's associated with metabolism, okay? It helps to kind of make sure that glucose is available and make sure that our cells are producing enough ATP. It has all these just very typical metabolic roles, okay? Which is fine. The problem occurs when cortisol levels get out of whack. And the thing that gets them out of whack is chronic stress, again, okay? So this is not like if you go exercising for 20 minutes, like that's not gonna throw your cortisol for a loop. But if you are experiencing like a really stressful situation for multiple days or even weeks, stressful job, stressful, like, you know, just, just experience having a bad couple of weeks, that's what's going to cause cortisol to increase. So we'll again, we'll go with chronic stress is going to increase the amount of cortisol above normal levels that are coming out of that adrenal cortex. This does a bunch of different things. All right. First thing that it does is that it encourages gluconeogenesis. Another thing that it does, it encourages lipolysis. It's also going to encourage the production of ATP. It's going to encourage the breakdown of proteins. It's also going to encourage, it's going to raise the amount of things like fatty acids, glucose, and amino acids in the blood. It's also going to mess with your hunger. What kind of foods do you think you're going to crave? High energy foods or low energy foods? Just based off of this stuff. High energy foods. There's a theme here. What cortisol is doing is that your body thinks that you're going to have to like fight a war like the bad, you know, because that's how the body interprets chronic stress. The body thinks, wow, you must be in like the worst situation ever and you're going to need all the energy possible to stay alive. So you know what? We're just going to raise the amount of blood sugar in your blood. Just keep it super high. We're going to raise the amount of fatty acids and amino acids so you have a ton of fuel. We got fat, oh, yeah, we'll just turn that into fuel, right? Oh, we need more glucose for sure. So let's just make a bunch of glucose so you have a bunch of energy available, okay? Oh, we're gonna mess with your hunger. You better eat a bunch of calories because you're gonna need them. And then, oh, we'll make a bunch of ATP because we need energy. And then, hey, let's break down some proteins too, just so we have tons of energy, okay? Another thing that it does is like, well, we need to save energy somehow. You know what, the immune system is not that important. So we'll just suppress the immune system. When do you usually get sick? In the beginning of the semester or around exam time? Exam <coughs> time. You're stressed, right? Chronic stress, all those exams, your cortisol levels are elevated, okay? Your immune system's suppressed, you're gonna get sick, most likely, okay? Also, when you're studying, you're all stressed out, do you wanna go get like a salad? 
or you want to like you know eat some junk food or something you, know, you need that like junk food well, well not everybody but typically when you're very stressed your body is going to crave these like high calorie um sugar rich foods and that's why stress leads to, to weight gain it's because it just ransacks everything it's just going to cause your blood sugar to be elevated right elevated blood sugar that's not used it gets converted into stored energy through adipose tissue, you know, eventually. And um, you keep craving that high energy food, and that's why it kind of stress, the connection between stress and um, weight gain is through these elevated cortisol levels. So the take on the cortisol is that it just provides as much usable energy ready for the body as possible, right? At the expense of the immune system. It shuts it down. Well, not shut it down, but it suppresses it. 